This week on Original Copy, Chris Brown does the classic, oh yeah, by the way, I've had a baby for almost a year thing and shocks the world. Also, student government elections were yesterday, but who really cares? We'll take a look at the candidates' fashion sense at last week's SU debate. I'm Jordan. And I'm Jen. And, and this, this is Original, Original Copy. Copy. Welcome back to Original Copy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jordan Hicks, and with me as always is Jennifer Vance. Thanks, Jordan. Now, I have to ask, what has been going on in the world of entertainment? Because I haven't been seeing anybody do anything lately. Are you kidding me? This past weekend was full of drama. NeNe Leakes is making a fuss over taking Joan Rivers' spot on Fashion Police. A video of Suge Knight running over those people in his truck was just released, not to mention what happened to Chris Brown. Okay, so actually, I'll admit, if it doesn't have to do with Beyonce, I'm not really paying attention. But you said something about Chris Brown? News got out that Chris Brown has a baby. Yes, a whole baby. The singer is the father of a nine-month-old baby for Nia Guzman, a model that you've probably never heard about. Now, the backlash has been incredible, to say the least. Brown is trying to take Guzman to family court to get out of child support since she leaked the secret. And Brown's ex-karaoke... It's Karuchi. Kamikaze felt played that Chris fathered a child while they were together. Apparently, she wished that Brown would have fathered the child with her, even though she was just the rebound girl. Ooh, secret babies and child support? That sounds like a pretty juicy story. But tell me, what did Rihanna have to say about all this? Funny enough, Rihanna thought the whole thing was fake. Reports say that when she heard the news, she busted out laughing. But the best part was when she found out it was legit, she thought it was even funnier. Rihanna doesn't have time to worry about that, though. She's too busy playing Titanic with Leonardo DiCaprio. That's very true. I guess I'm going to have to worry about some things other than Beyonce for once. Well, let's worry about what Kayla Mims got for us on the back wall. Kayla? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kayla in the City. Now, we all know how much of a drag the Mondays can be, but I have found the perfect place for you to unwind after a stressful day. It is called Red Beans and Rice Mondays over at the Rue House. Mr. Michael Foster, which is the band leader for the Michael Foster Project, teamed up with the Rue House to provide not only some pretty darn good red beans, but also some outstanding live music. One of the things uh, which we're at now, which you've uh, probably seen video from, is a thing called Red Beans and Rights Mondays, which was uh, an initiative to get musicians who you normally would only see on the stage, and some of them on big stages, to uh, get them to come to a community where we don't have a lot of jazz anymore, and to get them to get into the schools and do a couple of workshops. So Red Beans and Rice Mondays is an, is an initiative to get musicians from the stage to the classroom. And what we do once a month is donate a keyboard uh, in the name of a, a big name musician or a list name musician who comes from out of town and also in the name of the Michael Foster Project. We donate it to a school that's in need and we also follow up with uh, workshops and concerts in these same schools to kind of uh, give these kids something to see as an alternative music to what they listen to every day. So next time you have a long, stressful Monday, head on over to the Rue House from 6 to 9 for Red Beans and Rice Monday. And get yourself a nice little taste of culture and some red beans, of course. The best part about all of this is it is free, and I know exactly how tight things are on our college budgets. Well, that's all I have today. Back to the desk with Jordan and Jen. Kayla, you had me at free. Now I've got a plan for my next date night. But Jordan, you're always alone. Not the point. Up next, Leanna will recap us on the fashion choices of the student government debate. Stay with us for more original copy. That was mean. <laughs> Hey Tiger fans, welcome to The Talk, the destination to find anything and everything that is up and coming, trending, and fashionable. As most of you may know, LSU student government campaigns have been in full swing these last few weeks. And in celebration of these campaigns, Paige and I decided to swing by last Thursday's presidential campaign to see what these lovely candidates were wearing. I'm here with the Make It Matter campaign. Right now I have Ms. Helen Frank and Mr. Wesley Davis. Helen? Um, what are you running for today? President of Student Government. Okay, and Mr. Wesley? Student Government Vice President. Okay, and I just have to know, you look awesome. What are you wearing? 
Um, just some clothes that I scraped up at the sorority house. Uh, I'm not normally I'm usually found in a t-shirt, so this is kind of a struggle, but here we are. You look nice, girl. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Wesley, what are you wearing? You looking kind of sharp there. Thank you very much. I went with the classic Windsor knot tie. Uh, I chose to do the white classic shirt because I like the look against the charcoal, so. Okay, well, thanks, guys. I'm Leanna Pineda here with David Scott and Mo Hassan. Scott, would you run for him? Hey, my name is David Scott, and I'm a student body president this year with the Moore for LSU ticket. And my name is Mo Hassan, I'm a student body vice president with the Moore for LSU ticket. Okay, and what are you wearing? I'm wearing boxer briefs and the, um, mm -hmm. a very nice suit with the uh, Moore for LSU button. What are you wearing? I'm also wearing Calvin Klein boxer briefs with a Calvin Klein suit with a um, Moore for LSU button as well. Thank y'all. Hey guys, right now I'm here with the Here and Now campaign. I have Ms. Hannah Knight and Mr. Andrew Motzik. Hannah, what are you running for tonight? I'm running for student body vice president. Okay, and Andrew? Student body president. Okay, and I just have to know, Hannah, what are you wearing? I'm actually wearing a dress I borrowed from my friend Lindsay and some shoes from high school, so. Okay, and Andrew, what you got going on? This is just my favorite blue suit. Uh, blue's my favorite color. So is mine. Light or dark. Light. Me too. Um, and so it worked out with our campaign colors being blues. Um, it's just that, and then a tie from a friend and a watch given to me by my girlfriend. Okay, well thanks guys. It's safe to assume that the outfits the presidential and vice presidential candidates were wearing did not disappoint. Everyone looked amazing. Well, that's all I have for today. Let's take it back to Jen and Jordan at the desk. Thanks, Leanna. So, Jordan, have you been going to those anger management sessions that I've told you about? You know I have, but the instructor said I was way too much to handle. So it's time for the rants. It's time for the rant of the week. So unless you recently moved in with Patrick Starr under a rock at the bottom of the ocean, you've most likely heard about the SAE scandal at the University of Oklahoma. Members of, the fraternity, members of a fraternity were caught on the bus chanting racial slurs to the effect of, you can hang them from a tree, but they'll never be with me. There will never be an N-word in SAE. Ooh, classy. Now at this point, everybody has said this, that, and the other about how outraged they are about the video. Isn't racism out of style at this point? I mean, I never have understood how a school that big can have anybody making overtly racist statements like that when your football team looks like this. Do you see this? I can see one white guy on the field, surrounded by people he probably calls his brothers. So it's okay for blacks to win you bowl games, but not okay for them to join your frat. How can you be racist when these people you're shutting out interact with you every day? This is Howard Dixon, the house cook at Sigma Alpha Epsilon at Uni Oklahoma University for 15 years. Just look at him. He just looks like he knows how to make a mean barbecue sandwich. Them boys are eating good. Dixon says that while cooking for the boys at the house, he considered them family. And that's how they repay him? So it's okay for black people to come to your house and feed you, but not for them to join your frat. And look, SAE, I, I get it. Maybe you're just being fair. I mean. It's not like historically black fraternities allow people, white people in their organizations. Except that they do all the freaking time. Point is, those guys are trash. I really hope that the chapter on our campus isn't like that. Actually, our chapter got suspended a while ago. Dang, Jen. These fellas cannot catch a break. I'm sure not all SAE chapters are racist, but this raises a lot of concerns for black people who want to be a part of their fraternities. Eventually, this has to end. We all have to respect each other. Well said, Jordan. We'll be right back. Now, you, imagine you're at a party, and your boy gives you the opportunity of a lifetime, the ox cord. It's now in your possession and you will go down either a hero or that one guy that decided to ta play Taylor Swift. Well, let me help you. One word, three people, five letters. Yes, you guessed it. I'm talking about the gods of the ad lib, Migos. That was Original Copy's little brother, Reggie Chapman, and his web show, The Rundown. Make sure you all check him out with new episodes each Friday on TigerTV.tv. Shout out to him. Speaking of, Looks like it's almost time for us to go here to Original Copy, but before we do... It's time for some shout out. Can I get a shout out? Shout out to actors Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson for gracing the runway at Paris Fashion Week. But the stars weren't on the runway just to strut their stuff. 
The stunt was a way of announcing the sequel to the 2001 hit Zoolander. The sequel will feature Stiller and Wilson in their famous roles as Derek Zoolander and Hansel McDonald, respectively. You can catch the sequel when it comes out in theaters in February next year. Shout out to Kanye West for getting his groove on on the dance floor. Video of Yeezus has been blowing up on social media. West is currently doing a four-night residency at Foundation Louis Vuitton in Paris, and apparently this is Kanye's version of the robot, as only Kanye could do. You know, Jordan, I honestly think that you could do that dance move. Should I try it now, Jen? No, you should not. No. No. Yeah. No, stop. How he did it, he was like, uh, and he got up, and he... So, that's all we have for today. On behalf of myself and everyone here at Original Copy, remember to always keep it OC. Yeah, he was getting it. <laughs>